All right, you guys, we are going to get started. Welcome everyone to our very first Rachel Carson virtual open house. This is our 17th year of doing open houses and this is a unique time for all of us. So hopefully all of this uh, technology works for us tonight, works for you and we answer all of your questions that you might have about Rachel Carson. I have my team here with me. We have Debbie Silva who teaches math with me. We have Pad Quinn who teaches science. We have Debbie Herford who teaches humanities. We have Kendall Gibson, who also teaches humanities. We have Rebecca Hall, who teaches science. And we have our fearless leader, Kelly Cox, who is our principal. So welcome tonight. We are hoping that um, we can answer your questions. We're gonna go ahead and share our screen so that you can see what our goals for tonight are. Uh, Rachel Carson is a unique program. Um, we, um, we want to make sure that you know the details of our program, that you get to know the staff as well as you can in this virtual um, environment, and for us to be able to answer your questions. Sorry, lots of buttons. I had to unmute. Uh, I want to talk tonight about our philosophy at Rachel Carson and how the activities and um, things that we do at Rachel Carson fit with that um, philosophy. Our goals are to empower and teach students um, to develop a sense of place, uh, to connect them to their community. And we do that several different ways. Um, one of which is being out at some different sites that we call site visits. Uh, we have a garden site on, on our campus and then we have a restoration site. Um, um, at these sites, kids are problem solving constantly and they're working and they're, they're working together uh, to solve problems and to get work done. Uh, we also empower them in the classroom through different challenges and activities and open-ended projects where they are finding the answer, where we might give them a right answer or they might discover many different answers uh, that can solve the problem. Uh, there's a lot of group work and a lot of fun at Rachel Carson, but the goals uh, remain learning, connecting to a sense of place, and then teaching our students that they can go out in their own communities and make a positive change and positive contributions to their communities. Okay, thanks, Ms. Hall. One of my very favorite things about teaching at Rachel Carson is that we have a team set up where students get to stay with the same three core teachers for all three years. And it's a, beautiful, um, it's a beautiful thing to watch these kids grow in so many different ways. So this year we have the Snow Leopard team and that's made up of Ms. Silva for math, Ms. Hall for science and myself, Ms. Herford for humanities. And we have the group team, Mr. Gibson teaches humanities, Mrs. Schrader teaches math and Mr. Quinn teaches science for the group team. Each team is made up of 90 students and is a blend of sixth, seventh and eighth graders. No, sorry, that's one of the funny things about teaching from home um, is that during the day, whether we're in comprehensive distance learning or whether we are in the classroom, we have high expectations for our students, both in the classroom and outside of the classroom. Um, as Ms. Hall talked about, we really value community. We value supporting our community and building a strong Rachel Carson community. Kids really um, get to know each other well. And as a staff, we really get to know our students well. Definitely there's reading and writing across the curriculum. Um, math is a, is a solid part of the Rachel Carson program as well as science, of course. And when we can, we like to integrate across subject areas and we like to have a lot of fun together. So whether we are um, 
whether we're at home or whether we're at school, the main difference is what the day structure looks like. So when we're back in the building, the day of an RC student looks something like this. Um, we start our school day right around 7.30 with a morning meeting with 180 students and all staff together in the cafeteria talking about our day. Um, during the day, students have core classes, math, science, and humanities, and those courses, um, with few exceptions are a blend of all three grade levels. Students also have time for PE and their encore class. And these are some examples of the encore classes that are offered. There is some variety there every year. Uh, we do let students have lunch every day. And a class that's unique, and we'll talk a little bit more about that class later, is our integrated studies class. So um, that's our advisory class. We'll talk a little bit more about that later, but that's a, a time where we build um, build those connections between uh, the students and staff. We leave our school at 2.10. It's a little bit of an earlier start and it's a little bit of an earlier finish when we're not in comprehensive distance learning. All right, um, so what, what, what's it like in an RC classroom, whether it's virtual or in person? Well, I think one of the things that we want you to know is that um, the team of six of us, we've taught together for a long time and we love teaching together. Um, in fact, tonight we added up our years in the classroom and we are at 150. Between the six of us, we've been teaching for 150 years. And so you might hear that go, wow, that's amazing. Or, oh my gosh, are they tired and not really willing to try anything new? <laughs> well, <laughs> I want you to know, we love to innovate. Um, we wanna do what's best for our students and we wanna do what's best for our community. And so we really have a good time doing that. Um, some things you should know certainly are that in our program, homework is given every night, um, math for sure, and then um, humanities and science as well. We expect all of our students not only to complete their homework, but to really engage in their learning in the classroom as well as during those homework assignments. That's really, it's really important to us. And that's one of Ms. Hall's signature saying, engage in your learning and students know what that means. Uh, the next piece I think is important to know about is that collaboration is a really important part of our program and that can look a lot of different ways. Um, but know that we expect our students to um, work with their peers. We expect our students to um, be able to communicate with their teachers and really just to be able to communicate with community members as a whole, especially by the time that they leave us as eighth graders. While we do have high expectations for our students, we, um, we are not expecting them to be perfect. And our goal is always for them to see um, mistakes as opportunities for learning and growth. So those are a few highlights of life at Rachel Carson. All right, so one of the things that makes our program really unique is the multi-age classrooms. Uh, we have sixth, seventh and eighth graders working together in um, humanities and science. Math is a little bit different, but we still have sixth and seventh graders working together. So classes contain all three grade levels. Um, what it does is allow students to mentor each other and be mentored regardless of age. So at some point in the year, you would look in our classrooms and you may not even recognize who is a sixth, who is a seventh, and who is an eighth. Um, because they are helping each other with whatever their strength is. Um, this really helps build community throughout the grades. And students are able to put aside their grade, the, the age, um, and just learn. And their learning is at their level. So we are able to differentiate so that a sixth grader learns at their level and an eighth grader learns at their level, um, all in the same classroom. And because we have these multi-age classrooms, our curriculum is set up a little differently. We do a three-year cycle. So this year, our theme is change. So a lot of our work and integration revolves around change. Um, as sixth graders next year, the, the curriculum will revolve around the theme of sustainability. And systems is our third theme that we did last year, and we'll come back to that. So every three years, um, we rotate, it's the ties to what we're studying in the classroom, where we're going in our site visits, um, and kind of the, the pieces within the different curriculum areas. 
So integrated studies, uh, Ms. Herford did bring that one up. This is uh, like our advisory class. The one piece that is really special about this is we keep our students for three years. So my students this year are eighth graders. I've had them for three years in my in integrated study. So I had them as sixth graders. In sixth grade, we learned how to um, work lockers. We learned how to be a middle school student. We learned how to take notes, how to do homework. Um, just those, those middle school things you learn in sixth grade. Seventh grade, we call kind of the cake year. It's a little bit easier because students are, are in the routine. They understand middle school. Um, and then, um, so they, they are planning ahead, learning some leadership skills, doing a lot of mentoring with the sixth graders. And then as eighth graders, we are getting them ready for high school as well as working a lot on our eighth grade project. Um, so the class content changes as, the, as our students mature, um, understand middle school and are ready to move on. Leadership is a really big piece of our program and we develop leaders over all three years. And as eighth graders, um, even this year in our distance learning, they've been able to lead some community activities with our sixth and seventh graders and are doing a great job at that. The site visit assignments are also part of this class. So um, our site visits, which you'll hear about in just a minute, um, also have assignments tied to them and they are turned in along with the integrated studies. And math, of course, um, <laughs> we really hold to a growth mindset. So that whole piece of um, learning from our mistakes, we are all math people, we can all learn at high levels. All those are really important pieces in our philosophy in, in mathematics, in RC. We have a sixth and seventh grade blend. So our sixth and seventh graders do the sixth and seventh grade curriculum over two years. So we don't go straight through a book for sixth grade and straight through a book for seventh grade. We kind of um, have connected themes. So we have a year that's mostly number sense and year that's more geometry. And all of the targets that are covered in a, in a comprehensive middle school are covered, but just over two years. And then our eighth graders are all in AGS1, which is Algebra, Geometry, Statistics. Some of those students will repeat AGS1 in high school and some of them will move on to AGS2. Um, our curriculum, we have the uh, CPM, which is an ebook online. Uh, AGS is the Algebra, Geometry, Statistics. And we use a lot of other resources to be able to um, enhance the learning and also to integrate with science and humanities. Thank you, Ms. Silva. And humanities at Rachel Carson is the blend of social studies and language arts, as you can see here. And um, we do a lot of reading and writing workshop, which are intensive units where um, there's a lot of collaboration from peer to peer. And uh, us teachers, uh, Ms. Herford and I are in the role of facilitators and coaches and really helping to encourage them. We use a variety of social studies resources and texts. Um, this year as we're studying <coughs> learn American history, we have a couple novel studies that'll accompany that. Um, and uh, so that really helps our students to see beyond just the facts and the dates. Uh, they also get a personal narrative and a, a personal perspective of what those, those uh, time periods were like. We include novel studies, as I just mentioned, book clubs, and lots of free choice reading. We really encourage our kids to be reading lots. Um, we've just spent the year kicking off energizing our readers uh, and getting them to set goals and to track their reading and try to improve. And that is humanity. All right, so um, this, is, uh, this is why we're all here for science, right? So um, the, the problem is we've got all these fifth graders sitting out there watching. So raise your hand right now if you like, <laughs> like science. Is science a good subject for you? Yes, okay. I know you're raising your hand. I can, I can assume it's happening. Um, yes, we, uh, we definitely teach science at Rachel Carson. Uh, we like to think of it as a way to uh, get students to think. And the, the key is, we feel, is that if you can go through uh, you know, life, I guess, but go through some of our, our, our classes and our, our assignments and some of the things that we're showing you and kind of develop your own thoughts along that way based on some observations, 
then you're going to have such a deeper thinking and de deeper um, understanding of, of that topic and that idea. So that's kind of where we try to lead our students. Um, we do spend a lot of time with, um, with inquiry and feel that that's like a, a, a big part of what we do. Um, we, we, in terms of science, we would have the same topics that you would have in any uh, comprehensive middle school. Um, so this year we're, um, we're learning about earth science right now. And we're also going to be uh, later in the year uh, teaching physics um, as well as chemistry. But a big portion of our, our curriculum or at least our year is our students are, are involved in a kind of an independent project where they are, are going and, and putting together their own inquiry project and kind of going through all those problems. And that's, that's kind of the key is to, to have them, you know, stumble up against problems and then so help solve those problems or sometimes they're able to figure them, uh, those, those out by themselves. And the whole point is they learn more in trying to figure out how to make something work um, for what we are asking them to do, we think then then kind of a standard uh, straightforward lessons during that time. So I feel that that inquiry and that science fair time and that independent project is, is probably uh, one of the biggest parts of their learning throughout the year. Um, so the other piece um, that we get involved in a lot, um, our students do is service learning. And we want them to be part of their community. We want them to be comfortable to go out and talk to adults. We want them to be able to see a need for something. Um, we put them in a lot of situations through our, uh, through our site visits um, and some of the, the projects that we work on where they're actually out in the community doing uh, kind of uh, projects that are helping. Um, when they're in eighth grade, we have them actually identify their own project and they find a need within the community that they feel that they can make a difference in and they have to work through that. And that's what Ms. Silva was saying about how like difficult eighth grade gets and that they have a lot of work to do to figure out how to make this project happen. And again, I, I feel like that's part of that independent project in science. It's, it's, you know, this action project that they do in addition to that, that's where a huge uh, growth comes in with our students. Um, Site visits are, are critical to us. Um, they are not field trips, they are site visits. But one of the things that um, we, well, we're, we're doing them now. We're trying to do them now, even uh, virtually. And we've taken the students to Multnomah Falls. We've taken the students to Beacon Rock in the Gorge. Um, and so we've done some good things there. Uh, trying to kind of replicate some of those trips, but we will pick those up when we get back to school. Um, there are assignments associated with those trips, but before we get to assignments, those, those trips and a lot of what we do at Rachel Carson um, are benefited, or the only way we can do those is by having volunteers. And we want those volunteers to, to be comfortable with our students. And that's where we look to you, parents, for, for a little bit of assistance. Um, we love to have you come and help. We're having some volunteers now um, online um, with some of our uh, projects that we're doing as well as uh, some outdoor things at school as well. So um, volunteering from a parent perspective is a big part of it as well. Um, but when we get into the site visits, yes, we have, I think we had 30 to 35 parents show up on a Wednesday for us. Um, and that is, that's huge. We cannot do those trips without, without parents helping. Um, the assignment part of the trip, and this is where we want to make sure everybody realizes that these aren't field trips. They're not like, I mean, they're fun, of course, but they're not just for fun. Um, they are, they are part of our curriculum and the assignments associated with those are work. So I think Mr. Gibson's going to talk to you a little bit about some of the assignments that we might run into during that time. Thanks, Mr. Quinn. And yeah, just as he said, I mean, they're not, they're not field trips. That's something we really want to stress. I mean, they are fun, they're engaging, but we do assign work and there are learning goals and there are behavior goals and expectations that our students come home with an assignment every week. And that gives them an opportunity to expand, uh, to reflect on what they've learned, to process it. And so here you can see some of the examples 
uh, sustainability title page. Um, here's uh, from our wetland site, uh, invasives, or those may be natives, forgive me, Ms. Hall. Ms. <laughs> uh, those look like some natives that uh, students are sketching out, uh, describing characteristics. Um, and uh, here's a letter to the editor when we were visiting our, our partnership with our farm that we have out in uh, Jervis. And we're writing letters to the editor uh, advocating for um, the needs of farmers and how we can help to support them in their agricultural uh, work. And so lots of work to be done. Um, and uh, and that, a lot of that comes through integrated studies. So it's a great experience beyond just in the moment, kids have an opportunity. What, what was so cool about being, what, 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 what did we learn when we were at the wastewater treatment plant? What did we learn when we we're at the Bonneville Dam? And that's where we give an opportunity for kids to do that is through these assignments. All right, thanks, Mr. Gibson. Um, a lot of times, I, I have to say to all of you watching either live or, or watching this recorded, this is really hard for all of us to do. Um, I feel like, and I think my team probably agrees that it, it's, it's so foreign to us because we are so people-centered and, um, and dog-centered. Yes, we wanted to bring that up right at this particular moment. So that'll be taken care of, I'm sure. Uh, so if you are wondering if your child is a good fit um, for Rachel Carson, we want you to really think about the things I'm about to say. First of all, I, I want to say that we get a lot of parents coming through and they hear about our program, maybe in the community or they see us out working and um, they think, wow. I would love to have gone to this school. I would have loved to have gone to this school. I love teaching at this school. And, and, um, and they're like, this is the most awesome thing, which it is. But it's only the most awesome thing if your child really wants to come here. And it can't be you, mom or dad or grandma or guardian, whomever you are. I'm glad you're really excited about the program. But what we find is if, kids don't want to be in the program, it's really not a good experience. We all believe in middle school education. We're all middle school educators because we know this is such a, a critical time in a child's development. And we want all of the children in Beaverton to be in a place that is best suited for them. So who does it work for, for the kids? Uh, they're going to have to work with other people. They're going to have to work with uh, different adults, whether they're volunteers or uh, instructors out in the field or other peers. And I mean, it's not like they have to come in and be perfect already working with others, but we're going to, we're going to push them to, to do that and to get better. Also to be able to work for others, to not have it always be about me, but to think beyond. And I know it's, it's hard for middle schoolers, but we get them there. Uh, be able to work and know that the work they're doing is for someone else and thinking of that maybe sometimes before what they do. We also work really hard. We mentioned that. We work hard in the classroom. We work hard in the field. That's the expectation. Um, and we go out when it's hot, really hot. We go out when it's wet, pouring rain. We go out when it's cold. The picture here that you're seeing is a picture of the Oregon Food Bank Garden on the site at Five Oaks. I think we made that in 2007, we created the garden there. And many of the days where we started, it was 17 degrees outside, 17 degrees. And our students took shifts and they were so excited about starting this wonderful um, project on site and being a partner. So they're out there in the cold, they're getting wet, they're getting muddy. Um, and then just to be willing and, and you as parents knowing we do have those high expectations and, and we work together um, to make sure kids can do that. We communicate, our team, what you're not seeing and, and I feel bad about is what, what you can't see is the collaboration and community of our staff because we're all in these little window boxes uh, on your screen. Uh, we've worked together for years, uh, the six of us, and we work together really well. And it's a great place um, for your student to come if it's something that they're excited about. All right, Mrs. Schrader. Mrs. Schrader. I have, I'm doing two things at once. 
So the big question, you um, have to apply to come to Rachel Carson like you do for any of the option schools in Beaverton. Um, and our application like everyone's is due by December 11th at 4 p.m. Um, to be considered in our first choice um, pool of applicants. We accept 64 sixth graders every year. Uh, we have um, more than double those, the number of um, applicants who apply for those 64 spots. It's a question we get a lot. I think last year we even had a way over, well, I think we had over 170. Um, so th that is an important consideration. You get one application per student. Um, so um, you, you really do need to consider that. We don't know what's going to happen this year, though, I will say that. Um, we do not have automatic acceptance of siblings. Um, so if you will go to the next slide, Ms. Hall, we do yes, need second consideration. So um, through the lottery, we will pick 50% of those spots. So you mathites out there, that's 32 students that we will pick through the lottery and 32 students we will do uh, a second consideration process. And those details are emailed to you um, with the, the lottery results when those come out um, mid December. And so if you have any questions, feel free to email either myself, Tammy Schrader, or Rebecca Hall at the emails listed there, and we can answer your questions. And I think that is our last slide. So I want to um, say thank you for um, listening to our spiel. And now it is time for us to stop sharing our screen. And we are going to turn it to questions in the chat. A few of them I've been, were, were, I was answering if I could while we were speaking. I didn't know if everybody was able to stay the whole time, so I wanted to get started, but we will start from the top of these questions. So the first question, um, I think that I will send this one to you, Mrs. Herford. Um, the question is, do we accept kids with IEPs at our program? Yeah, absolutely. Um, in our program, we teach a, a range of students and we have students who have IEPs. We have um, students who are identified as talented and gifted and um, we welcome diversity in our student population. Very nice. And um, how about TAG students? How are they accommodated? And can math be done so that AGS-1 is taken in seventh grade? This is Silva, can you answer that question for us? You're muted, my friend. There we go. Now I can do that. Um, we do differentiate within our classroom. So having that six um, to eight blend in the other classes, we're able to do that. And then the six, seven for math. Um, we typically do not um, accelerate students if we if unless it is what is best for them so we do have students from time to time that will do ags1 as a seventh grader um, but it's um, we really don't feel that rushing students through math is what's best for them but if it is appropriate for them we will definitely accommodate yeah, and I'll piggyback on that a little bit too. I think another consideration for that is if you take AGS as an eighth grader, you have to go to a local high school. Actually, you have to go to your home high school. And so there's, there's time busing um, that students miss out on, on our classes, sometimes our site visits because math is, could also be on a day that we have our site visits. So there's a lot of the, uh, program pieces that students could miss out on um, by attending a, science, a, a math class at a high school. So that's just something to consider. Um, Ms. Hall, here's a question for you. Do you have to be great at science to come to Rachel Carson? Well, Mr. Quinn's not very good at science and he's been here for oh. years. So no, I'm, I'm just kidding. No, you don't have to be great at science. In fact, a lot of our elementary students haven't, um, you know, some of them haven't had a lot of science in elementary, unfortunately. And you do not have to be great at science. You can have very little understanding of science. What we want is an interest. And we want you to be interested in the natural world. We want you to be interested in how things work and, and curious. And when you're out there and you're, you're living your life and you're going, wow, I wonder why that happens. Wow, I wonder what's going on there. That's what we're looking for. 
you'll learn the answers. You're not supposed to come in with all the answers. So no, you don't have to be great at science to be a student at Rachel Carson. Very good, thank you. Um, a next question we have, um, Mr. Gibson, I think this might be for you since you are teaching, currently teaching eighth graders, but uh, maybe considering how they led up to that. But a question is about how many volunteer hours are required of our students each semester? Sure, well, we, we build up to it. And yes, uh, Ms. Silva and I have eighth graders this year, uh, but starting in sixth grade, back when our eighth graders were little youngsters, um, we had them come in and we, have, we start at sixth grade and we ask them to do uh, five hours uh, per semester. And that's an opportunity for them to get out in the community, um, get their, their, dip their toe in the water with different organizations, different groups, um, and see what really drives their passion. By seventh grade, we start doing some research around some of those passions. They, we ask them to do 10 hours per semester of volunteer per semester, uh, 10 hours of volunteer hours per semester. And then by eighth grade, uh, the eighth graders are primed, they're ready. Hopefully they discover that passion. And if not, there's still time. So we have some eighth graders currently going through that process right now. Uh, they take on a year long intensive project called our eighth grade action project. And that's 20 hours per semester. Um, and that includes um, also connecting with an organization or a group um, that they can help work with uh, an expert in the field or a mentor. They can kind of help guide them that they can learn from. Um, and meanwhile, also doing research and lots of reflections throughout the year. And then it culminates at the end of the year with a, a, a fantastic evening um, where eighth graders get to present their work um, in, in, in a forum. Hopefully it's live and in front of families, uh, but whatever form that takes, um, that's a night to celebrate their, their three years collectively of work um, and to celebrate all their hard work. And it's, it's amazing. It's amazing. The impact, it doesn't just stop at eighth grade. It goes on and we hope uh, they, it, they, it just carries on into their adult lives and they keep giving back. And we've seen so much evidence of that over the years. It's amazing. And I also want to invite everyone to join us for that. So watch our calendar on the Rachel Carson website or the Five Oaks website is where we're linked um, because we would love for you to see those eighth grade projects um, when they come out. So there'll be some kind of a, a, a recording of those. That would be great. Um, and the next question I will kind of answer is, will second consideration look different this year? And do you have an idea of what it will entail? Well, yes, second consideration has always been in person. So, um, and we've always done that in January. So it will be different this year. Um, details will come out um, when the district emails the lottery results. So if you are not chosen through the lottery, um, that's where you will learn about the next steps for, for second consideration. Um, I think Kelly, uh, Mrs. Cox, this is for you. So uh, my quest the question is, what is the cell phone policy for students? You gave me the fun question. Um, in middle school, we don't we don't have cell phones out during class. So every once in a while, somebody tries to pull them out during class or play with them. But in middle school, we really think that cell phones should be either in your locker or your backpack, or better yet, not even at school because we don't want them to get broken or or anything like that. So um, in our building, we don't do cell phones during during the school day. We also feel like it's really important for our students to focus on their learning. And it's really hard to do that if your cell phone is going off and making noise or vibrating all the time. So. Excellent. And as you can tell, our teachers wholeheartedly agree with that policy. So <laughs> on our trips, um, no cell phones. Um, Mr. Quinn, I think this one is for you. How often do the kids take trips when we are in person? Our uh, site visits, we, well, we'd like to do them all the time, but we don't. Um, so we average about three per month. And when we do those trips, it is the entire day um, in most cases. Um, so if a student is on a trip, uh, say we went to Beacon Rock, uh, they would be on that trip uh, with that teacher and that group of students for that day. And what we do is we set uh, trips up on a uh, rotation. So we, we have kind of four trips to go on and groups of students are going on those trips. And so they'll go through that rotation of, of trips and then we'll start over again with a new uh, four set of, um, of locations. So about three times a month, I guess, is the answer to that one. And um, Mrs. Herford, I think this is right up your alley. 
Are there any classes focused on or that integrate art? Um, well, Mr. Gibson and I really love to integrate arts and humanities when we can. And we have an art literacy program at Rachel Carson and um, we have parent volunteers that come in and teach. And we can do those art projects, oh, four to five times a year. Um, we have art literacy presentations and production sessions. Also, um, art is currently offered as part of our elective program um, at Five Oaks and Rachel Carson. Very good, thank you. And that uh, leads us. I'm sorry, I was just gonna add in there, Ms. Schrader, I think a lot of our humanities assignments are very open-ended and allow students to, you know, demonstrate their understanding in, in ways that may be beyond just, you know, writing sentences out or adding a paragraph, but also opportunities to really um, add some artistic uh, creativity to their pieces. And I, I think we all do that in, in a lot of our assignments. I think that's a great point, Mr. Gibson. And Mrs. Silva, are there any electives offered while you're at Rachel Carson? Yes, so um, there's an encore wheel or selection. It's different every year, but you might have um, art, um, tech, uh, there's a band, sometimes there's a music class, Spanish has been offered. So it depends year to year what offerings um, will be available, but yes, you will have an encore class or two during the year. Very good, thank you. Um, so I think I'll put this one at you, uh, Ms. Hall. How about, how, are, how often are Rachel Carson kids integrated with kids at Five Oaks? Well, based on our experiences uh, last year and uh, other, the, the past, you know, several years at, at Five Oaks, we have sometimes shared lunch uh, periods uh, integrated with Five Oaks students and then often our PE and Encore classes uh, and some of our specialist classes are integrated with Five Oaks students as well. So that's an opportunity to build community in a, in a different way than when we're isolated with just Rachel Carson students. Very good. And Mr. Gibson, can you talk about how site visits are working this year in our virtual setting? Yeah, well, we are, um, we're doing our best to, to really replicate the experience. Obviously we wish we were getting on buses and heading out, um, but it's really been an all hands on deck uh, experience with, uh, there's been video components, uh, breakout sessions. And so we're gathering students together once a week. We're getting the whole school together. So it's, it's a lot. We're bringing in volunteers and coordinating um, live footage along with the breakout sessions and activities throughout the day. Um, and really just trying to also hit on those learning targets and those goals associated with the trip as if we were, you know, uh, not in COVID and not doing virtually. So um, as best we can, we really are trying to bring everything we can from a trip as if we were uh, doing it all together on the road. And can I just add to that, that um, that's an opportunity and it, well, that's a time when all of our students are together. So we are continuing through CDL to build that community that we've talked about during the entire presentation tonight. And one of the ways is through our site visit. So the nice thing uh, about doing some things through CDL is we can have all 180 kids uh, on the same site visit. So when we uh, took the kids to Multnomah Falls a, a few weeks ago, all 180 of us are on the same Zoom session. We're all learning together. And then when we put those students in breakout rooms, they're still mixed, just like we would if, if we were at school and actually going. Um, and mixed means uh, sixth, seventh, and eighth graders together and kids from the group team mixed with kids from the Snow Leopard team. So we're still continuing to build and, and build upon the community aspect. All right, Ms. Cox, I have a question for you. Um, I think it's going to be twofold because I have a few that kind of relate. How many Encore classes can kids take beyond PE each year? And do all kids take Spanish? So good questions. Um, and that is something that, that changes year to year. So I'm gonna hopefully not share information that's 
too new to everybody, but one of the things the district is working on is more of a common middle school experience. So obviously Rachel Carson is special and there's components of the program that, um, that, that are very, very unique. But when I say a common middle school experience, the, co the comprehensive middle schools, right? So Five Oaks, Cedar Park, um, Stoller, right? They're going to more of a, a common experience where you would have similar electives school to school. So this year at Five Oaks, all kids have PE and then at, at Rachel Carson, uh, all kids have PE in one encore class. If they have, if they are in band, they'll have that encore class the whole year. If they're in other encores, it'll change at the semester. Um, because of how we had to do cohorting, it limited the number of options that kids had. So normally we would want them to be able to have some choice in the encore classes that they take. So if they're really excited about art or drama, they could go into that class this year because of you know, COVID and all the other things going on. We had to put a lot more a lot more of a box around all of those things. So we're hoping, you know, um, hopefully next year we'll all be back in person and doing school um, a little more like we're used to. And so we can go back to offering more selections for Encore classes. So in terms of the common middle school experience, what that means is that the Encore classes that we're able to offer right now might look different next year, right? And depending on if I'm, I really apologize. We're clearly having a moment over there. Um, the, uh, depending on if we go to a six period day or a seven period day or some sort of other schedule, that'll, that'll determine how many classes, how many encore periods we can offer students. Um, we do have Spanish at our middle school right now and I'm hoping that we can expand our program and have um, levels of Spanish. So we're not just teaching intro to Spanish. We're actually giving kids more, um, you know, more depth as they go through their experience. Very good. Thank you. Um, so another question came up about applications. I just want to be really clear is that even if you are in the attendance area for Five Oaks, you still have to apply to go to Rachel Carson. It's not a, a program that you can choose once you're there. And another question came in about the number of applicants and we get um, somewhere between 140 and 180 applicants each year for the 64 spots. So um, again, everyone has to apply to come. Um, let's see, they, we do have some applause for the cell phone policy. I will throw that out there. Um, Mr. Quinn, can you talk about how we do math and the other subjects during site visits? Oh yeah, so um, one of the things that we uh, try to do at the start of the year is all uh, six of us teachers will sit down and kind of look through the trips that we're going to be doing. And sometimes the, the trip kind of dictates the, the curriculum that we put with that assign or with, with that trip. So, uh, so in other words, um, Miss Silva might say, oh, okay, I'm gonna take that trip because that fits in with something I, I can do in my class. And conversely, you could do the same thing with humanities and science. So what we try to do is to, to, to make that best fit. A lot of times what we do is we get, um, the location uh, will provide, you know, amazing uh, information and resources uh, to us and to our to our students. So sometimes that will determine uh, how we kind of uh, continue with that trip and how it fits with our curriculum. Thank you, Mr. Quinn. Mm -hmm. um, another question is, um, and Miss Hall, I think this one is for you. Um, with the new middle school boundary, is Rachel Carson likely to change locations? Or is that still to be decided? Well, as far as I know, and then I'm going to hand it off to Kelly Cox. Um, as far as I know, that has yet to be decided by teaching and learning. But um, am I correct, Kelly? You are correct. So it, it's going to depend on the final middle school boundary decision. So and even though there was a whole committee process, that committee makes a recommendation to the superintendent and the school board and then the superintendent and the school board make the final 
determination about what the boundaries actually look like. So once those boundaries are decided, they will look at the number of students projected to go to each school the following year. Um, and then they will move forward with, with placing um, some of the option programs. That's a very long answer to say, no, it's not decided yet. <laughs> Sorry. Right. All right. And um, I don't know who wants to take this one. Maybe you, Mr. Gibson. Um, are kids placed on teams based on any particular criteria or uh, such as zoned school or neighborhood? Um, not that I'm aware. I think they are placed, um, you know, I think some, some considerations are made uh, if there happen to be siblings or, uh, but otherwise, no, I don't think that there, that is a lot. Right. That is right. And um, another question we have, and I think I'll answer that is, does Rachel Carson accept students in seventh grade? And typically we don't have space for them in seventh grade. So um, just to explain our program uh, or recap just a little bit is we have 180 students and essentially we want to have 66th graders, 67th graders, and 68th graders. And because kids move, um, families change jobs, things like that, um, we do have a little bit of attrition each year about maybe one or two students. Um, so that's why we accept 64 6th graders so that we hope by eighth grade um, we still have 30. Um, but because of the way we do math, it's virtually impossible to accept seventh graders. And there's typically not room in the seventh grade classrooms because we would have to lose five or more kids to have less than 60 kids in that class. Um, so typically, um, if there is any openings, it would be at the eighth grade level, um, but um, we don't, not always, not every year. Um, but it doesn't hurt to apply. If you're right. <coughs> so I think... That is all of the questions that I have up here. Um, is there any last minute um, things that teachers, we think we need to make sure that we recap about our program so everybody has the best information possible to make choices for their family and for their students? I think you just got one more question. Oh, thank you. Mm -hmm. Um, Ms. Hall, do you want to take this one? Is there a required amount of parent volunteer or family volunteer hours per year? No, there's not a required amount at all. Um, we have some families that can contribute a lot of time at school and we appreciate that. And we have families that uh, contribute in all the other ways, like supporting your child and making sure they're ready uh, to learn, but maybe you can't come to school and actually um, volunteer. There is absolutely, absolutely zero uh, requirement for you to volunteer. And I just want to emphasize what Mrs. Herford said earlier is we value diversity at, at Rachel Carson and we want, um, we want everybody who has a kid that thinks they're the right fit. And that it doesn't matter if you're um, the best science student or the best math, or we want you uh, willing to learn and work hard and laugh and cry with us in our community. And just because parents aren't necessarily volunteering all the time, they still feel a very strong tie uh, to our community. We do a lot of uh, communication back and forth. And um, but over three years, you get to know people really, really well really well. I, I guess that's what I would add here, Mrs. Schrader, at the end is just, you know, it becomes a family. We get uh, sixth graders in and, and they're bright eyed and their teachers are exhausted because they don't know what's going on. Just you can pick out of the group who you think has sixth graders right now in their IS. Um, and then when they leave at eighth grade, we're all crying and we're all sad to see those kids go. And we're grateful when, when they connect with us again and, and tell us how they're doing. So it's just a really tight knit group. And I think that's hard to share over this medium. Um, but we're really excited about the future of Rachel Carson. And we're excited about the things that we're doing, especially uh, in today's time, we have some really critical information and, and processing and thinking skills to share with students today. Yeah, and we've gotten some more questions. So I think I'll be <laughs> going with those. Thank you, Ms. Hall. 
Um, and I think Mrs. Herford, this is a good question for you. Can sixth graders engage with other grades? So can you talk about our multi-age? Yes, um, absolutely. You know, even in this, the CDL distance learning environment, we've found lots of creative ways for our older students to mentor our younger students. And, um, you know, that can be via Zoom and breakout rooms, you know, they're having conversations, they're answering questions, um, they're developing friendships, you know, just, just like you would with a student um, that's your own same grade. I think in our program, a lot of times it isn't so much about what, you know, what grade you're in as far as friendships and connections. Um, it's just, you know, you're another Rachel Carson student. And so that's, that's one of the beautiful things. But yeah, we do that a lot of different ways. Site visits is um, one of those nice times where students can connect across grade levels. And then certainly when we're back in the building, it just happens naturally in the classroom and in the hallway at lunchtime, lots of different ways. And just recap that our classrooms are multi-age. So I think that's really important that people sort of wrap their brain around that our kids are sitting in two of their three classes with sixth, seventh, and eighth graders. So, um, Mr. Quinn, a question for you. What types of science are done or focused on? All of them. Um, yeah, so um, we, um, as, I, as I said before, we really kind of go through the, the same uh, learning targets that, that students uh, go through at a comprehensive middle school. Um, we do that through um, kind of a, we, we like to say we do that through a lens of environmental science. Um, and so what we're trying to do is to make sure that uh, students understand the natural world, understand um, you know, what, what is happening and you know, maybe what could cause uh, problems in the future. And so a lot of times uh, students will, just as an example, will study uh, during chemistry, we'll be doing water quality studies and we'll be um, trying to get students to understand, um, you know, what is in the water that affects the organisms that we find in the stream. So I think there's a lot of things that we do um, that are very, I guess you would say traditional, but the, I think there's a lot of uh, uniqueness to our program uh, where we, we try to connect them to uh, more of an environmental science uh, feel. All right, Ms. Cox, this one is for you. What is the current diversity ratio of our kids? Good question. So um, we can look at that two ways, right? At, at our school as a whole, we, again, are gonna lose our minds right now when I'm talking, I apologize. Um, we are about 37% white, 44%, I just looked it up today, this is why I know, 44% Latino. Um, and then it's pretty evenly dispersed among our uh, African-American students, um, our multiracial students, and our Native American students all, you know, in the one to five percentage range. And then um, the rest of our students are, are Asian. So they're about 10 to 15 percent. Um, and Rachel Carson, it's a little bit different, right? And, and it looks a little bit different. So about... 75% of our Rachel Carson eighth graders are white students. I think the other grades are a little bit more diverse. I don't have all of the, uh, all of the, you know, numbers are on me right now because I was looking at our building as a whole. So I apologize for that. No, thank you. Um, another question that we have, um, Ms. Silva, I think this one is, is is a good one for you. Are there any extracurricular clubs or sports teams with RC or do students just join Five Oaks? So students actually have an option. They could join the Five Oaks clubs or athletics. So um, when we were at school, we had several of our students run track with Five Oaks kids. They also have the opportunity to um, participate with their home middle school. So let's say I would have gone to Cedar Park you do have the option of doing the programs at Cedar Park as well. So um, we actually have Rachel Carson students competing against each other sometimes um, in track and field and cross country. So, but there are a variety of different clubs when we were at school. So students might participate in a chess club, um, you know, a music club. There's a 
variety of different clubs offered and they get to they can stay after school and participate with Five Oaks students. Can I add a little bit to that? Um, this year we're looking at virtual clubs. So there are a number of virtual clubs that will be starting in the next couple of weeks and information will be coming out about that. But I know we have uh, staff members with varied interests who are, uh, there's one club that will be all about soccer, but we, and we found a way to get kids the equipment so that they can be playing on their own, but also at the same time in Zoom, it's a whole, it's a whole thing that somebody else is an expert on. Um, but there's, there are clubs that we're gonna be doing virtually too. So if we ever have to go back to this, we've found ways to do it in multiple formats. Nice, thank you. Also, we cannot forget about our canines for class. We have an after school dog training class for um, Rachel Carson and Five Oaks students, but it, it happens right after Rachel Carson gets out of school um, when we are in person. So um, look for that as well. Um, and I think there was one other question. Um, if students have any questions or parents have any questions, the email um, is, I can put that back in the chat. That is Tammy called. Schrader, Tammy uh -huh. slash Schrader. And try to spell that last name. Or you can spell Rebecca Hall at beaverton.k12.org.us. Um, but either one of us, you can reach uh, via email and we can answer your question. Um, and that goes for students or for families that have questions. But I think that is all of the questions that we have in our chat um, for now. Um, so I think we can, um, Ms. Hall, if you want to close us up for the night and we can all get back to our families. Okay, everyone, thanks. I will be shorter this time. Um, just want to thank uh, Kelly. Thank you for being here and um, answering those questions and being a part of Rachel Carson. It's really nice to have you here. And uh, the team, um, we all miss each other very much. Uh, and we miss the kids, but we're glad that you're all here tonight. Uh, this will be recorded. It'll be posted uh, everywhere that you found the link. It'll be posted and um, share it with your friends because um, we want people, like we said, uh, to know what we are and know what we aren't. So you're really informed to make the best decision when you fill out that application. So thank you for coming tonight. And um, we hope to see you uh, next year. At least some of you, I know we will see you next year. So have a great night and bye-bye.